nursed him immediately after I gave birth to him. And again, it was still a challenge. Like he was, I feel um, he wasn't latching on right away and he wasn't getting what he needed. My journey into this world of lactation started when my oldest daughter was born uh, 23 years ago. I was breastfeeding her as I knew that I would, but I was having a lot of trouble. I, I wasn't successful breastfeeding my daughter. She was born by cesarean. I wanted to breastfeed her before I had her. I went and did a hospital breastfeeding class and thought I was prepared. My son was born premature. He was born at 28 weeks. Um, we spent three and a half months in the hospital. I breastfed my son while he was receiving uh, oxygen support. Um, I've had my son stop breathing while he was at the breast. I have four children, eight grandchildren. Um, and three out of my four children are breastfed. Um, and the reason that I work in breastfeeding now is because I was able to see very quickly the difference between the child who was breastfed and the child who wasn't. I still hold to the fact that um, that less than 1% of women worldwide cannot breastfeed. What we hear a lot here in the U.S. and across the board, regardless of race, is a lot of moms say they can't breastfeed because they didn't have any milk or their milk dried up. And the thing with milk is milk does not dry up. What happens is milk production slows and milk production is basic reverse accounting. The more you demand of your body, the more you'll make. For some of our moms, we have to understand that we'll say that's what it is, but there's a lot of other things driving. A lot of times we're dealing with so many other barriers. You know, if my mom is 15 years old, I have to say 15 because I work with high school students too, but if my mom is 15, she could be 40 and have the same situation, especially nowadays, times are hard. When your lights are due, you have no gas, you know, somebody is sick, he's trying to get you for custody, you're trying to figure out what's going here, your mom's fussing at you it becomes something that you have to sit over here, especially if you don't have the support that you need. Supposedly, a rat across the board, whether, whatever your education level is as a black woman or your income level, you're least likely to breastfeed. Um, and it, 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 it's very interesting and it's very much, there's some issues that are coming up that are specifically about black women's lives. I was raised to always believe that breastfeeding was something that white people did. It wasn't something that we did. A lot of the images that you see are not women that I could connect with. They're like white Americans, like modern white Americans, or they're like, you know, African Americans, but they, they're dated. A lot of dated images. Not seeing women breastfeeding, not knowing what normal breastfeeding behavior looks like, is really detrimental for women that want to breastfeed. We have a lot of um, traditions and opinions, right? A lot of things that we carry down through generations. Um, grandma said, you know, remember gra uh, grandma said, or mom always said you should do it this way. And it's great to have traditions. But sometimes you have to tweak your family traditions a little bit and, you know, kind of extract and incorporate, right? Pull the good stuff out and incorporate those things. The stuff that's not necessarily factual, you have to start to work with it. And this causes a big problem in our families because here, if your grandma didn't breastfeed and your mom didn't breastfeed, when you come home and saying you're going to breastfeed, you're not necessarily going to get the support that you're looking for. With my first daughter, I was enmeshed in my family of origin. Um, I moved home to have the baby. They, they didn't want to help me breastfeed. Um, if anything, they probably would offer, you know, a um, to bottle feed, because that's what they know, you know? They don't know how to support a woman breastfeeding because they never breastfed. Part of our shame from breastfeeding comes from slavery, comes from being a wet nurse, comes from their grandma, great grandma, being a wet nurse and we don't understand it right now because it's just so interesting again this is part of the layers one of our layers as black people is that as we try to do more for ourselves being seen in any fashion that related to slavery related back to those times when we were enslaved is we were warned against we were tried to our ancestors tried to shield us in a way protect us from some of the things that they went through and wet nursing for an enslaved African woman was could 
very well be part of her job. And it could be very well be that she was breastfeeding the master's baby and could not breastfeed her baby. You have to think about it. What did slavery do to us as parents? There's a fear of being attached to our children. And I honestly do think it is a direct result of slavery. Um, we weren't able to bond with our children. There was the fear of our babies being dependent on us as they should. But in those days when there was a, a possibility of one, I may die, they may come and take my baby. Um, I may not have the connection with the dad because they may sell him off. So we were taught very young to be disconnected, but connect in a different way. There's this shadow in our psyche about this mammy and our great grandmama said, you know, you don't have to do this, you can do better. And there was their way to protect us, but it, it now it's twisted. Like we have shame around breastfeeding, but we don't even know where it came from. And then it gets all mixed up in what white folks think about breastfeeding and what America thinks about breastfeeding. And, and we are just so mixed up because we don't know the origins of these stories or where this came from. We just bought, you know, we drank the Kool-Aid. We've, we've been, we've been force fed the Kool-Aid. In the breastfeeding world, we call it artificial baby milk, but they've given it a formula. They've made it right. It's the perfect formula. It's there. It was actually created for moms who were sick, um, who died to feed sick babies who were not able to feed at the breast. And we've taken that and because of money and marketing and the bottom line, we've brought that over and we've replaced it with what is actually normal for us to do. And when you look at the marketing campaigns that we have, especially in our communities, you see a can of formula and then you see this nice, juicy, healthy baby with these rosy cheeks that most times, nine times out of 10 is not of color. It's usually a Caucasian baby with these nice rosy pink cheeks with this blonde hair and blue eyes. If women got empowered, all women got empowered, really got empowered and realized that they don't need that and it's making their baby sick and it's making them sick too because it affects our health when we don't breastfeed, um, we wouldn't buy it. We wouldn't demand it. We wouldn't, there would be a, less of a demand for it. Breastfeeding rates are low across the board regardless of race, but it is, much lower for us. Just like chronic disease affects us, we rank highest in poor birth outcomes. We are the ones that are having premature babies. We're having the ones that are low birth weight. Breastfeeding has affected us the same way. And so I think that's one of the reasons why we need to have this push to have African-American lactation consultants um, in all of our communities. In terms of raising breastfeeding rates, boy, we just, it's to me what we need to do it is a whole, it's such a huge cultural shift that we have to go through. We have to go through psychological healing. You know, we have to go through um, understanding what it means to be empowered, to be conscious, to, I mean, we have so many layers that are separating us from having a breastfeeding experience with our child. And unless you can like really get in and peel back those layers, you're not going to get into that woman and the truth of the matter is you're not going to necessarily get to her in this generation i think over the years different things are going to work i think in terms of what's going to work now for women in 2014 or going forward is getting the information out to them in the way that they're taking in information whatever that looks like so videos on youtube um you know iphone apps um stuff on facebook or social media things that are actually going to speak to black women and more and more of that is coming about thank goodness uh, um, I, I, I think that that is helping I think it just takes an effort across the board collectively we need to work to show breastfeeding as not only a healthy but positive part of our community um, and I think we need to work together we need to be supportive of one another. But then individually, we have to make our own decision and say, this is what I'm going to do as a parent.